Welcome back. Now, the Democratic Alliance will this weekend hold its elective federal Congress for the year 2023. And this, of course, to elect the party leadership under the theme, uh, a strong DA to build a better future. The party says that the theme embodies a DA working hard to build a new majority for South Africa that will free the country from the clutches of bad governance, corruption, rolling blackouts, the high cost of living and a high crime rate. Now, this Congress is not only expected to elect leadership, but also to make important changes to the party's constitution. The DA's constitutional amendments chair, Kevin Milliam, says that uh, there have been numerous calls by DA members for changes to be made as to how the Federal Legal Commission operates. And outside the party, the DA has been criticized for its inability to appeal to a black electorate. And this and the fact that the DA seems to shed black leadership continues to be a snag for the party. Now, the DA's Federal Congress presiding officer, Greg Crumbuck, joins us now for a discussion. Greg, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning and morning to all your viewers. So firstly, let me ask you about uh, the preparations. Uh, are you on track? Very much so, Sakina. Um, we have had all our elections um, amongst our councillor caucuses around the country to elect that component of the Congress. We've also had amongst our non-public representatives, all our branches holding AGMs to elect their delegates to Congress. That's about a thousand people there. We have to have at least 45% of our Congress comprised of non-public representatives so that we do in fact represent the voice of South Africa. That's all proceeded very smoothly. Our voters role is signed off. We have demonstrated and tested our voting system. So we think we're going to have a very professional and very efficient voting system on Sunday. And I think you're all going to enjoy our opening ceremony, which is going to be very inspiring, in my opinion, and give South Africa a lot of hope. So what will it be about that opening ceremony that uh, you think will inspire the nation, Greg? Well, um, I think if you've seen good Hollywood productions, you'll know what the Democratic Alliance is capable of. It's going to be um, fantastic imagery, it's going to talk about the problems of the country, certainly, but more importantly, it's going to suggest the solutions that are within our hands as South Africans to implement. And I think by the time we get to the opening ceremony and we get to the end of the closing credits, people will see that the DA has got a plan. The DA can win. We're only 11% now behind the ANC, according to independent opinion polls that have been published. And we're going to really have an opening ceremony which says to South Africa, change is coming and change can come as early as 2024. That's why I think it's going to be very inspiring. It's going to reignite hope in our country. You say, according to some uh, independent uh, polls, you are 11% uh, be uh, uh, behind the ANC. Is that 11% behind where the ANC currently sits or where the polls expect them to be in the 2024 election? No, so the polls I'm referring to are the report newspaper poll, um, and that was where the, where the ANC currently was. Obviously, the ANC and the DA go up and down week by week, month by month in the polls, but every poll that is published now, including our own polling, and indeed the ANC's own internal polling shows there's a gap between 9 and 11% week by week. So there was another poll done by the Social Research Foundation, which showed that the DA has now, in fact, overtaken the ANC in urban areas. And we found that very, very encouraging. South Africa is urbanizing and the DA is growing where people are gravitating towards. So it, obviously it will change from month to month. And the real poll that matters is obviously the actual poll of we, when we actually vote in 2024. But we're very encouraged by the way the numbers are heading north. Mm, absolutely. But seeing that you brought up uh, the issue of polls and independent uh, polls that we see from time to time, the ANC's own uh, internal um, uh, polling and research that they've conducted has indicated that they will, in fact, uh, drop significantly. So does that mean that the DA will be dropping along with the ANC? No, because if you look at, for example, let's take the 2004 election, um, we, we were on 12%, the ANC were, was on 70%. So, you know, there's a 58% gap there. It's now down to single digit figures. And we have grown very, very significantly over the years. So some of our own polling puts us at 31 or 32%. And um, in the report poll, it was a couple of points less than that, but in the high 20s. So in fact, our polling is growing. What also we see 
is actual election results. So if you take Enoch and Gajima, which is a rural area in the Eastern Cape, um, a basically 100% black ward. We fought that about six weeks ago. And the DA polled 38% in that ward. And that actually shows that the polls are correct. Because what we're seeing, which is a, a rising, a very strongly rising black support for our party, is reflected in some of the by-elections which are exclusively black. In Yanga as well, at, 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 at area in Cape Town, again, a 100% black area. We did very well there. We quadrupled our, our share of the vote. So I think we are rising. It's shown in the by-elections and it's shown in the ANC's polling as well as our own. And we're now in the high 20s and sometimes, as I said, touching just over 30% as well. I would imagine that you're not just telling us that for the sake of it, uh, Greg. Uh, this is, I suppose, in response, if you will, to some of the perceptions out there that the DA is actually failing to make any significant inroads when it comes to the black vote in South Africa. Would I be correct in assuming that? Well, there may be that perception, Sakina, but at the end of the day, um, there's the difference between perception and reality. And the reality is the published results of the IEC after these by-elections that I've described. I could add Lambert's Bay, I could add Matsikama van der Reinstorp, I could add Prince Albert, which is a colored ward, to use that term, where for the first time we now run a municipality in the Southern Crew. These are all published results by the IEC, accepted as such, as the reality. And so the reality shows that we are growing very, very fast, that we're winning in places we haven't won before, and that our black support is rising, as I said, in Enoch in Bajima, in uh, Eastern Cape, up to nearly 40%. So that's the reality, and I juxtapose that against the perception that you realize. But our job, obviously, of the next year is to change that perception and make sure we get those kind of results all around the country. And one would imagine that's going to be quite a task, given that uh, the DA has been losing some of its uh, black leaders and uh, quite uh, quickly, as it were. Uh, you take, for example, Gwen Nguenya, the latest person to resign from uh, the party. Uh, it was said that uh, she resigned a couple of months ago and had to stay on uh, to do some work towards the success of this particular Congress. Now, if you look at the reasons uh, that were offered, uh, we were told that uh, she has found other interests in Asia. But you, would, you, you could understand why the public is skeptical when it comes to the DA. We've heard people have gone to Harvard to study uh, all sorts of other reasons when it comes to black leadership. And once they reach the pinnacle in the DA, they somehow seem to find their way out. So uh, talk to us about that in terms of why the DA seems to be incapable of holding on to some of these senior black leaders in the party. Well, you see, you said some, and I think that's that's the point. I mean, we have, for example, Soli Malazzi, who is a candidate um, up for election this weekend, our national spokesman. We have Sivue Karube, our chief whip. These people are in the party, and if you look at the number of people that are left over the last few years, it's a vanishing small percentage of the total number of public representatives we have. So let's talk about Gwen and Gwenya, since you raised her name. So Gwen has made a huge contribution to our policy development process, but she got an offer in the private sector, um, which was a really, really significant career opportunity for her. She could have just upped and left. Instead, she said, I'd like to take up this opportunity, but I would like to complete the job that I started with the Democratic Alliance, which is to help us develop and refine our policies. And we give great credit to her for that, for saying, I took on this job, I will complete it. So we did know a number of months ago, she did inform us that she would be you know, keen to take up this offer. But she did finish the job that she sent, uh, you know, that she set out to do for us. And so we wish her well. We think it's a marvelous opportunity for her to grow and uh, we will stay on very good terms. She remains a member. And I hope in a few years time when, when she's explored those private sector opportunities, she may very well say it's time to come back to the DA. People come, people go. The point is, they are very, very small percentage. And in a case like Gwen, I, I actually wish her the best of luck, as does the party, because nobody should be held with an iron chain to the party if you get a very, very significant offer that can help you grow as a person and develop your career outside. We say open opportunity party. You, you should go and take those opportunities in life. We only have one life to lead. So best of luck to Gwen. Mm. So you say it's a small percentage, but these are very senior members of the party that have left. And uh, you, 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 you can't blame the public for uh, reading 
perhaps uh, something into that if you have someone who was previously the party leader uh, if you have as i say very senior people in the party uh, who happen to be all of them black and after a while they part ways with the party and often or mostly not amicably it would seem so what is it then because then you hear someone like Mus uh, uh, musi maimane was a failed project that, you know, that's such a, a loaded message to send out there to the black electorate in South Africa. Uh, so how do you allay the fears of those who say that the DA just uses black people in the party and when they've served, uh, you know, their purpose, they are discarded? Well, um, with respect, Sakina, I think we, we're actually varying a, a very long way from the topic you asked me to discuss this morning, which is my preparations for the Federal Congress. But, you know, people have the right to leave. If people want to leave, they must leave. And I don't think anybody was forced out. Um, people took their own decisions, and that is what life is all about. You make your own decisions, and if you want to leave, you leave. And we're going to carry on. We have 1600 roughly public representatives that is a very very big number compared to the very small numbers of people that have left as i said Saviwe garubi is our chief whip in parliament she's doing a fantastic job she's very happy where she is we have ivan mayer our federal chairperson also a person of color so i'd much rather concentrate on the positive and wish people well that have left and they are um, small in number compared to the people joining. And we will see a leadership emerging this weekend, I believe, that is diverse and will take our party forward. And they are all staying. So if one or two people want to leave, that's their right. Um, I don't think the party is all about that. If it were to be a big problem for the voters, we would not be rising as fast as we are in the opinion polls. We would not be hitting 30%. If this was a real issue, I think the public understands that if people make choices in life, one or two will change. But when you have nearly 1600 public representatives, it's a small number. All right. And, and I think uh, fair to you, in fairness to you, um, you know, SABC will be covering uh, the DA Congress. So there will be opportunity to canvas some of these issues with some of the other leaders in the party. Absolutely. But, uh, coming back to uh, the actual uh, elective Congress. Now, how many uh, members are expected to uh, participate exactly? And also the electronic voting system that you will be using. Uh, tell us more about that. And, uh, you know, in terms of contingency plans for glitches etc so um, in terms of the number of delegates we have just under 2,000 delegates that we know are going to arrive it is a fact when you have 2,000 people pe a person might develop COVID syndromes for example um, might be ill might have an accident um, you know the day before and so you always have a few people not many but maybe one or two percent that don't come. But we'll have the better part then of 2,000 delegates, very close to 2,000 delegates who will be voting. Um, they'll be voting in two ways. Um, for the constitutional amendments and for the resolutions, they'll be using a device, a very simple handheld device, which has a yes or no button indicating their support or otherwise for a, an amendment or a resolution. On, on Sunday, between 6 a.m. in the morning and 9 a.m., we will be voting for the leadership elections. And that's been done on a, a device called OpaVote or a method called OpaVote. It's an electronic voting platform where you will get a link and a code. You access that link, you drop in your code, your ballot papers pop up, and you then submit electronically. Um, we do believe it, it is a very, very reliable and proven system. It's used around the world not only by political parties, but by big organizations. We have used it for three or four years now at federal congresses, at provincial congresses, at caucus selections, and we've never had one problem with it. We've never had a glitch. Um, it is a marvelous system in the sense that you must fill out your ballot paper correctly and completely in order for the system to accept it. So one, the wonderful thing about this DA Congress is that we're going to have a zero defect voting system because there will not be one spoiled vote and that's one of the advantages that open vote will give to us and of course we'll be there to um, report on all of this uh, but just mm. in terms of you know contingency plans as you say you don't expect uh, anything to go wrong but uh, do you have contingency plans in place just in case 
Yes, so we, we always have to do that. Um, as you said before, um, we started the actual formal interview. We, we are characterized by having very professional and slick um, congresses that run on time without glitches. So we have at least two, and you, you might argue three, backup plans for OPA vote and for voting generally. Um, we are not going to be um, held back by load shedding. There are plans for that. So I expect, like in every other Congress we've had, where we've had these electronic systems, it is going to go smoothly. And if anything should happen, which I think is very unlikely, but if anything should happen, we have a plan B and a plan C. And when will we have the results, Greg? So um, the voting will be completed at 9 a.m. That's when we'll cut um, the, the voting period out or, or cut it off. And um, we will then download the voting results from the OPA vote uh, file server in a lockup and we'll go into lockup at around about 12 o'clock. Um, it'll really only take um, a few minutes to get those results, but the lockup will remain until two o'clock and then from two o'clock to 2.30, um, my, my presiding officers and I will announce the results um, on stage live to the nation. And that will be on Sunday? That will be on Sunday afternoon, yes. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks so much for engaging us, uh, Greg Crumberg, a Democratic Alliance's Federal Congress presiding officer, uh, discussing the DA's elected Federal Congress 2023, and that's to elect uh, party leadership this weekend. And of course, SABC will have you covered on that as well.